and welcome back to part 2 of this tutorial series if you have not watched part first yet please check it out first now let's continue with this series first go to the player script here we need to add a private voice start method we will be using the tweeting function to gradually reduce the player's voice scale over time write transform.do scale y and provide two parameters the end value and the duration I will hard code the values for now but we can change them later if necessary. Don't forget to use the duty namespace unless you can't access the duty functions. Save the script and return to Unity. Save the project and hit play. We can now see the player gradually reducing in size. However, we have two problems. First, we need to stop the scale reduction after the player reach a specific scale. Second, the player is not touching the ground. Let's fix these problems. In the player script, add a check. If transform.localscale.y is less than or equal to 0.25, if this statement is true, we need to stop the tween function. Write dotween.kill transform. Also, if the statement is true, the game is over. So write a debug.log statement here. Save the script and go back to the Unity. Hit play and observe the player's y scale. When the player y scale is less than 0.25, the tween function stops and you can check the console for the debug message. This solve our first problem. Now let's move on to the second one. The player is not touching the ground. In the script, remove transform.position.y instead write 0. Save and hit play. Both problems are now fixed. Also, make sure to adjust all the position and replace capsule collider with the box collider. Ok, now we need to create another cylinder. It's responsible for increasing the scale. I just rename it called small candle. Please make sure to add a tag called small candle and also a spear collider on it. So create a folder called prefab and drag a small candle here. I just duplicate this prefab several times just for testing. Later we will add a proper spawner for this small candle. Select the player and back to the player script. We need a private void on trigger enter. If other.gameobject.compare tag is small candle then we need to destroy the small candle object. Also we need to stop the tween and add another transform.do scale y which is end value is 1.2 and duration is maybe 1 for now. What this line does is when the player collide with a small candle, the small candle is destroyed and the player y scale increase in size. After completing this function, we need to reduce the scale back. Also make sure to destroy other dot game object not the game object. Okay. Save the script and back to the Unity. Save the project and hit play. As you can see, when we collide with a small candle, the player Y scale is increasing. Now just delete this prefab from here because it's time to create a small system for our small candle. So right click and create an empty game object and rename it called spawner. Also create a C sharp script called candle spawner and drag it onto the spawner object. Double click to open it in Visual Studio. Here we need a serialized field private int candle count. Also serialized field private game object small candle prefab. Instead the start function we need a loop. Replace length with candle count. Here we instantiate our small candle prefab. We need a spawn position and quaternion.identity. Okay, there is a spawn position. So let me just create one vector 3 spawn pole. It's equal to new vector 3 0, 0, 0. Create another float variable called z value and add it here. And after the loop ends, increase the z value by 20.
So save the script and back to the Unity. Find your small candle prefab and drag it here. Hit play. As you can see, we successfully instantiate 11 small candles prefab in line. But we don't want to position our first small candle here. We want to start from here. So back to the script and just add 20 here. Save and test. Okay, it's good. Now we need to randomize the X position. So go to the script. Here we need a serialized field private vector to min max X position and add this here random dot range min max X position dot X min max X position dot Y. Save and back to the editor. Give the values here negative 3.5 and 3.5 and hit play. As you can see now, we successfully create our small system for a small candle. That's it for today's video. If you like this kind of tutorial, then please give it a like. And if you don't want to miss game development content, then please subscribe to our channel. It gives me motivation to create more content for you.